All right, guys, today we're going to be putting a set of Mishimoto electric fans on the Ram Charger. That's the one thing it didn't have, which prevented us from going for a really long test drive and doing like highway pulls. Uh, also, the lack of diesel that, uh, that makes things difficult. Um, so we're going to show you guys the fan setup that we're going to put on it. Huge shout out to Mishimoto, Ricky over there, awesome guy. Me and him talk back and forth about Turbo Miata stuff and he's always down to help me with not only my projects. Ah! Okay, I'm just gonna hold this now. But also fed with his projects, which is super cool. Thank you, Ricky, thank you, Mishimoto. You guys are awesome. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. All right, Fed, what do we got here? All right, so. Fed's got his uh, tough guy, I was a bully in middle school shirt on. Yeah, more like the I ripped my shirt, so I ripped the other side to make it even. No. Shirt on. That's way less cool of a story. While I was being a tough guy in middle school. Oh, okay. This is a adjustable thermostat fan controller with the relay built in. Um, this lets you set the temperature which your fans turn on and off. So that I just on an ignition. So like... Your battery doesn't die if you have the key on. Yeah. And your car can actually warm up. Yeah. Very important things. And the other cool thing about this, I was reading the uh, diagram here. This actually has provisions for air conditioning and a manual switch. What? So you can wire up one of these wires. You wire up to the positive going to the AC clutch. And it'll turn the fans on regardless of what temperature is on. That's really cool. That makes it so you can put electric fans on something and like really not lose any. Yeah, retain all the right reliability and daily usableness. All right, open the fans. Let's do this. I've been waiting this whole time to open these fans. I haven't seen them yet. Ta -da. Ta -da. Wow, that's actually really nice. Packaging. Yeah, the packaging. Need to make sure that these are gonna fit uh, right, thickness-wise. They should, based off the specs. But let's do it. Oh yeah, we got like a mile and a half. Oh yeah, there's like a solid inch there. That's more than we thought there was gonna be. And that's the tight side. Damn, hell yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. These are really slim. Um, yeah, they're like as slim as you can get, I think. I don't think I found we found anything slimmer than that. When I first started this, I was like, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll get some electric fans from the junkyard. But A, those are huge. B, there's a chance you might pick up a bad fan. C, this is way nicer. Yeah, it's a way better setup. We love you on all Mishimoto, but also you have the slimmest fan that we could find, so that's another reason. So we've got to install these, and then we're gonna go on a real test drive, do some pulls, like I'm really excited to see. He drove it around a little bit, he went and got gas in it, or diesel in it, and did some pulls and said it feels like really fast. So I'm excited to see that myself. So we'll do that after we get this done. Once this is done, this thing's like daily driver ready, right? Uh, Besides the air conditioning, because... Right, besides that, but I mean like... Yeah, but the drivers, I need to fix the driver's side window. It's uh, kind of intermittent. And so uh, gotcha. not having AC and windows up, it's <coughs> it's a sweat box. Not ideal. Well, daily driver ready, I mean like we could go somewhere. Oh yeah. Like not just around the neighborhood. Like Canaveral Girls. Yes. All right, so we this whole time we were planning on taking the front clip off, like the, the grill and like intercooler, intercooler and stuff. And then we realized we could probably just take the AC condenser out and snake our hands back there to get the little ties that hold the radiator fans on. And this is looking sketchy, Fed. Why don't you unbolt the radiator? Because that would be the logical thing to do. Oh, okay. That's not the right size. Or the right direction. Either way. Oh, I love. Standard bolts. What's the size? I think it's a. Take that out of the. Give me that. I think it's a 3 8 is what this is supposed to be. Oh, this one's going to be a pain in the ass. Need a wrench. Need a wrench. Yeah. 12 ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is better. Get my hand kind of down there. Okay. So. so right now, before we mount the first fan, we're trying to determine uh, where we can mount the second fan and just make sure that we don't screw ourselves with the mounting of this one because we only have one package of these radiator cable tie things that we got from the auto parts store. 
Fed didn't think to try to get them from Mishimoto, but their setup looks a lot nicer than this one. But these should work still just fine. You can find these at like any auto parts store. I like the vibration. Oh no, because I need to come over some. If I want to actually get this tie in. Sit. Okay, so. And do the bottom and the top and we try it. Yeah, that's the most logical way to do this. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah, there's not a snowball's chance in hell. Especially now with enough dexterity to get this on there. Yeah. And guess what? It's raining again. You really can never see rain in a camera. Typical Florida. Afternoon showers. Alright, let's get this. We're gonna have to, we decided we're gonna have to take the front clip off. So, I mean, just the bumper and the uh, inner floor, because I cannot get my hand in here down far enough to the bottom to put that little piece on. And pulling the radiator out is gonna suck, because one, we're gonna lose all our coolant. Two, these hoses are really difficult to get on. As you can see, this hose is this diameter, almost stretched to this diameter. Uh, so, that's like not an ideal option. So grill, intercooler, fans, test drive, burnouts, backflips, tail whips, let's go. Uh, we'll do the backflips but not the tail whips. Okay, all right, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine, no, that's fine. All right, we have devised a new plan that just involves tilting the radiator as much as we can. Yeah, the boost tubes are kind of hard to line up because of the angle of that one's underneath the battery. So. Yeah, basically anything we have to actually take apart to do this is gonna suck, so we're trying to avoid that at all costs. Which is not the way you should normally work, because only taking more apart is the easiest way. Yep. But in this scenario, it's not. All right, let's do it again. Ooh. Oh, good idea. <laughs> Hot boy AF. Hashtag clean fan install. Hot boy, but still cool. Hot boy, but still cool. Oh my god. <laughs> That was, a, put, that was the dad joke. They need to put me on that dad jokes show. Yeah, hot boy, but still cool. Because it's a radiator fan. Now all we gotta do is figure out how to wire this thing up, which should be easy, but Fed's stressing it for no reason. Only difficult thing is gonna find it be finding a place to put the... It's just a regular radiator push probe. Oh. It's even easier. Oh, wow. Never mind. We were worried we'd have to find a place to thread the probe into the water, but this one's just, you just push it into the radiator fan, so it's cake. It's actually really easy. This is a downflow radiator, so we want to be like in this area. The truth is this the moment of the truth, Fed? Oh, well, you probably need both of these. Yeah, yeah that would make sense. God, you're so corny. These fans really blew me away. Oh, just stop. So what we just did for test purposes was power the ignition wire that we need to wire up and then power the AC one. So you can either turn that to where when your AC comes on, it overrides and kicks the fans on or to a switch. toggle switch if you wanted to. So now we know they work. Finish up wiring, go for drive, do third gear, fourth gear pulls. Right? Right. Correct? Third gear, fourth gear pulls. Tight. Oh, it's not working either. 
Yeah, like the lines are next to each other. I need a piece of hose. Oh my two. gosh. But I didn't have anything at the house. It was the right diameter. And a cheetah print hand liner. You're so mad about that shift knob, it's hilarious. It's not bad, I don't hate it. Yeah. So fake other fans all working, the the pins to the probe backed out, so I couldn't adjust it right. But you gotta adjust it to a good temp now. I don't know what temp it's it's running. But it's coming on. Yeah, you can I can turn them off and on depending on the dial, so like everything's working. Oh cool. I should cool. uh let it warm up from cold and then adjust the fans like that. Right. So that was the first real test drive in the Cummins Ram Charger. First actual pool, not starving of diesel. Pretty exciting. It's like, it feels, when you when you build a project car, when you get to that point of like the first test drive, it just feels so sketchy and feels like the whole thing's gonna fall apart. And now it's feeling like the whole thing's not gonna fall apart. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now that we're done with this, Kyle's here and Chris is here. We're gonna go mount tires because we're all going to the compound tomorrow. We do. I don't have brackets for my hard top, so I'm going to have to go topless. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to mount the tires off my works onto the Koenigs because I decided I'm going to keep the Koenigs uh, and the tires that are on the rear are like super small. So I'm going to try to put the larger tires on and then mount tires for them and stuff. So, what are you working on today? Uh, Sex dirt. Oh, those Zeus fastener things? Yeah. They suck. Is that what they're called? Zeus fasteners? No. Uh, rib nuts. Rib nuts, right. They're different. Zeus fasteners are like the quarter turn things, right? Yeah. Alright, so the 275s fit. It looks like they'll roll about the same amount that these would, but they're much taller sidewall, which raise the car up some. Um, and they look a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and mount these tires that I had on the Koenig wheels on the VSKS for drift spares. And then get the other uh, 275 down on this. And then mount Kyle's wheels and then on Chris's wheels. Dope. Not any tire switch. Except these work so horribly to take tires off. Much better with a meaty tire. Oh, that looks good. So aggressive. The tire is close to where it's gonna rub, but it's like should be okay. I think. I think we're good. <laughs> all right, we got Kyle's tires mounted, all stretched, hot boy. We got Chris's <laughs> tires mounted, and except for two because they were they did not want to pop off the feed for some reason. I'm so sweaty. It's so humid, but. I've got my tires mounted. We got drift space for the bag, drift space for the Miata. We're going to the compound tomorrow. Good Saturday, productive day thing. Yeah, that. Right? Productive Saturday. Those look hot boy AF. Ah, uh, people hate when I say hot boy. It's stance, man. These are nice. Stance. I want to run these as dailies now. They kind of do look sweet. <laughs> I sold Kyle my old XXRs because they don't fit at all on my car in the rear. They'll fit on yours because you have flares. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm excited for tomorrow. Me too. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, tomorrow we'll be going to the compound, so look out for that video. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot more people coming this time that didn't come last time. A lot of people who haven't ever been before, like Kyle. Uh, we've got three Miatas, turbo Miatas, that are going to be drifting, so it should be a good time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Say bye, Kyle. Bye, guys.